in the darkest of nights, scenes that conjure the darkest days in the history of our continent. The Chancellor of neighbouring Austria has already likened Hungary's treatment of the refugees to Nazi cruelty. This, its draconian response to the surge of humanity engulfing Europe. So far this year, half a million desperate people, mostly fleeing war. Well, it's one minute to midnight and it's eerily quiet on Europe's southern front. And frankly, no wonder, because anyone approaching now from the Serbian side faces a six-foot-high wall of tightly coiled razor wire and then the 15-foot-high fence, again topped by razor wire. As of now, it is a criminal act to enter this country illegally. Hungary's hardline prime minister, the self-appointed policeman of the Schengen zone, says he's doing it to defend Hungary and Europe. In the early hours, Hungarian police caught 174 people who'd somehow breached this fence in the hope of travelling unrestricted through the visa-free Schengen zone towards their Eldorado. All will now face criminal prosecution. This morning, Hungary as determined to enforce its will as it was unapologetic. Fresh arrivals had continued up the railway tracks, hit the Hungarian buffers and been forced to turn sharp left. Well, as predicted, there are hundreds and hundreds of refugees on the Serbian side, all trying to get into Hungary here, but the border has been completely sealed. These people have been locked out of Europe. Having already fast-tracked laws to strengthen police powers and prescribe strict punishments, at noon today, Hungary enacted emergency legislation to assist in the cleansing of what its prime minister likes to call our Christian culture. Due to the situation caused by mass migration, uh, the Hungarian government declares a state of crisis, a crisis situation which obviously enables police and other authorities on the ground uh, for a special protocol. Uh, the duration is as long as it is necessary. Uh, and it is for two uh, southern counties of the, uh, of the country uh, for the moment. We found a means to cross the frontier in the opposite direction to witness this sorry backlog from the Serbian side. Open the doors, they yelled. We are across a thousand of kilometers and across the sea, dangerous. And, and they, our brothers die. They don't accept to cross this board. The legality of what's been done by Hungary, an EU member and signatory of the UN Refugee Convention, is under question. It claims the vast majority are migrants and aren't in direct danger. And anyway, they say, why can't they stay in Serbia? They've threatened to deport them, and the Serbs aren't happy. The idea of returning the migrants to Serbia, with others coming from Greece and Macedonia, is unacceptable. This would turn us into the recipient country. We want to be part of the solution and not a victim of this situation. As the European Union argues over how to share responsibility for those who've got there, human rights lawyers say Budapest has abrogated its responsibility under international law to provide safe passage and fair assessment of asylum claims. Umm Mohammed, a Palestinian survivor from war-ravaged Yarmouk camp in Damascus. She's alone here and is exhausted by her journey. Please, we help. Asser was a fellow TV reporter from Baghdad before he was hounded out by sectarian militia. He's stuck in legal no man's land. My freedom, my future in Europe. Among the former communist states of Eastern Europe, there is fierce resistance to this tsunami of humanity. There's prejudice and chauvinism. There's ignorance and fear. We've long heard talk of fortress Europe. Well, this is it.